Good morning. Let's have a little conversation about Israel and Hamas. In case you guys didn't know, Hamas was created by Israel. See, the PLO was created in 1964, uh, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, because of some of the shenanigans that Israel was pulling. Now, keep in mind, from 1964 to 1981, PLO was the primary person going against Israel. Basically, they wanted human rights. They wanted Israel to understand, you are not our parents. This is our land. We are sharing it. Started out that way. Then they had a head bump, 19, late 1960s. Okay, things simmered down. PLO was still pushing. PLO was against Israel expanding because hey, there's limited land. Where else are they going to expand except into Palestine? Now, mind you, you can look up any old map from 1930, 1940, 1950, and it says Palestine. So if people try to tell you Palestine never existed, it's a fucking lie. That means that these, all these maps that existed around the world meant nothing. Someone just pulled it out of their ass. So that is a lie, okay? Now, we fast forward to the 1980s. Negotiations, peace treaties have drawn up. Yeah. Netanyahu didn't like that. Yeah, they, all that. So, another political group came up called Hamas. Israel actually supported them, funded them help them at that time, okay? Think of it this way. During the 70s, um, there were gangs in South America dealing drugs, harvesting them, making money that way. We created MS-13. By we, I mean America. We trained them. We gave them weapons and funds and sent them back to South America and parts of Mexico. Yeah. You see the parallel there? Only thing was, when MS-13 got down there, they looked around and discovered they could kick the ass of the gangs and they could take over. And they became cartels. You know that nasty little thing that our politicians like to throw around? Almost as much as they say, Dude, we're being attacked at the border. Yeah, the same shit. Different country. So, we created MS-13. They created cartels. That is an American problem. Israel created Hamas the way it is right now. They funded them. They gave them weapons. And the reason the people so support Hamas now is because less, I believe it was two or three years ago, there was actually a protest. Just the only weapons they had were signs. And Israeli snipers shot them. And what did Hamas do? They ran back to the Palestinian people and said, see, they don't even consider you human. They shot them down unarmed. So, you know, you really need to count on us. Think of it as an abusive relationship. But mind you, as of right now, since the incident, the attack on Israel, where a little over 1,200 people died or were injured, we're now well over 4,000 people in Gaza who have died or who are injured. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of why so many countries are telling Israel, you need to let us step in and handle this. You need to let us step in. In my opinion, the UN, Britain, and America are responsible for all of this bullshit. It's as if they took two squabbling children, put them in a room, and every time they open the door, they're in there bloodied, and they just closed the door again. 
No one actually steps up and says, listen, this is what the fuck we're going to do. We are going to finish this shit. Yeah, Israel, we send you six billion a year. And yeah, we send a couple million over there. But you know what? We're going to step in and start actually guiding that money. We're going to get water purification plants set up there. We're going to get power plants set up there. We're going to get the beginnings of farming reestablished there. And you are going to stay the fuck out of it because we're going to actually handle it now. No one's done that. They still keep closing the door and letting those two children beat the crap out of each other and go, oh my God, such violence, such death. Bullshit, America. Bullshit, UN. Bullshit, England. Y'all don't pop up till you decide to. Now this young woman right here, she lost her job because she spoke out in support of human rights for Palestinians. I'm sure this young woman will get another job. She's a law student. She'll get another job. But the reason she spoke up is because of this. She sees the problem and she's speaking up about it. And I invite my fellow Americans to do the same. That's not being anti-Semitic. That's being an independent speaker with free speech that when you clearly see something wrong, you speak up about it. So don't start screaming she's anti-Semitic. Fuck that shit. She is speaking truth to power, and you may not like it, but there's a whole hell of a lot of Americans, and a lot of them are Jewish are not buying the bullshit. Matter of fact, in Israel, there are Jewish people protesting Netanyahu and how the fuck he's handling this. Yeah. They're pissed off. People who live in Israel are pissed off about how this is being handled. So I dare you to call that anti-Semitic. Jewish people are disagreeing with how this shit is being handled. They're disagreeing with that open air concentration camp and the way people are being treated who live there. There are Israelis saying their fellow Israelis, if a Palestinian walk past them, they will spit on them. They are speaking up that there are th that people can be ready to go to work and because they have to go through checkpoints. They may shut down that checkpoint that day, which means they can't go to work, which means they can't make any money. Same thing for schools. If the children want to go to school, they will shut down the, the, the checkpoint, and that child can't go to school that day. There were, I believe there were two hospitals, maybe three in Gaza. They're down to one. With all of these people being injured, they're now down to one fucking hospital. I want to see pictures of what Israel looks like right now. I bet it doesn't look like this. They got hit one time in the nose and this happened. That's a bit like somebody walking up, punching me in the nose and instead of returning the favor, I take out a two by four or a baseball bat and just keep hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting and leave this behind. I want y'all to think about this. And by the way, vote, fucking vote. I don't want to hear another motherfucker talking about, I don't like how Joe Biden's handling this, so I'm not going to vote. We did that shit. In 2015, because the Barney bros were upset because Hillary was a candidate and we got fucking orange tangerine. Learn from the past, damn it. Vote because our democracy depends on it.